message in Spanish for instructions. So uh, let me just do the instructions for the Spanish speakers to access interpretation, and you will be able to see the globe at the bottom of the screen right after my message. Uh, para los que hablan español, esta junta incluye una interpretación en español. Si quieren accederla después de este mensaje, podrán acceder a un globo, un icono de globo abajo de su pantalla. Si no ven el globo de interpretación, puede estar bajo los tres puntitos de More eh, y seleccionar el globo y el lenguaje de español. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. Okay. So... We will go ahead. I'll give you another second to locate that globe icon. And then we will start. All right. Welcome to Meet the Candidates, the Diocese of Chicago's Candidate Forum for our 2024 annual convention. We will use the chat feature for questions. Uh, I have two colleagues here, Karen Gutierrez and Crystal Plummer, who will help me to monitor that chat. If at any time you have question for any of the candidates, please type it into the chat along with the candidate's name. And after all the candidates have introduced themselves, we will move into a period of Q&A. The forum is being recorded and it will be available for playback with Spanish subtitles before convention next Saturday. My name is Louisa McKelliston. I am the leadership development officer on the Bishop's staff, and I am your host for this meeting. Welcome everyone, good morning. This year, delegates at diocesan convention will be electing candidates to standing committee, bishop and trustees, and the cathedral chapter. We are grateful for all to, who step forward to offer their name and talent for leadership in our diocese. Today, we will meet this year's candidates for elective office. This forum is organized to give delegates an opportunity to hear from the candidates and to ask questions. For each elected body, we will remind everyone of the roles, name of the candidates, and then invite the candidates to introduce themselves. As we read the description for each elected body, we invite candidates for each body to use the raise hand button to confirm that they are on the Zoom so we can call on them for their introductions. And we will start with standing committee. Candidates for standing committee, please use the raise hand button to let us know that you are here. The Standing Committee of the Diocese of Chicago is a council of advice for the bishop. The Standing Committee is elected by representatives from every congregation in the diocese at diocesan convention. Every Episcopal diocese has a Standing Committee with responsibilities assigned by the canons of the Episcopal Church. A majority of the Standing Committee of all dioceses have to consent when any diocese elects a new bishop. If a diocese does not have a bishop, the standing committee has the authority to make certain decisions for the diocese. To be ordained as a deacon or a priest in the Episcopal Church requires the approval of the standing committee. So in the Diocese of Chicago, the standing committee works closely with the Commission on Ministry from the time a person is nominated by their congregation until they are ordained. The Standing Committee is also legally required to approve decisions about clergy leaving the Episcopal Church for any cause. In the Diocese of Chicago, a few special customs and provisions apply to the president of the Standing Committee, who is elected by the members of the Standing Committee. For example, the president is automatically a member of the Diocesan Endowment Fund Board. This year, we will elect one clergy person and one lay person for three-year terms, and one clergy person for a two-year term. The clergy candidate receiving the most votes will be elected to the three-year term. The clergy candidate receiving the second highest number of votes will be elected to a two-year term. In the clergy order, there are three candidates, so this is a contested election. The candidates are, in the clergy order, the Reverend Jaime Briseño, 
the Reverend Joanne Lagman, and the Reverend Court Williams. There is one candidate in the lay order, Mr. Wes Kimes. And I will go ahead and start with the folks in the clergy order. And I will ask, is Jaime here? I do not see Jaime. Okay. Uh, Jaime, if you are here, just uh, toss a message into the chat. I will move on and ask uh, the Reverend Joanne Lagman to please introduce yourself. Tell us your name, your congregation, why you are running, and why you are a good fit. Hello, good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Joanne Lagman, and I was previously the rector of St. David's Episcopal Church in Aurora. Uh, presently, I serve as the missioner for Asian American Ministries for the broader Episcopal Church, uh, which makes me part of the staff of the presiding bishop, um, Sean Rowe. Uh, I am a resident here in Chicago, happily, and have always uh, been, and hope to continue to be. Uh, and that is in part why I run. Uh, this diocese is important to me, as well as uh, the voices present here. Um, in the diocese in Chicago specifically, um, I hope to be a voice for people of color. Um, as well as um, one for the LGBTQIA plus community, uh, where I sit in those um, intersections, especially as an Asian person. Um, and uh, I, I continue to have a heart for the small congregations. That's where I was a rector for some time. And um, those close relationships with people um, continue to be important to me and, and not just a overarching um, sort of a way to be a priest. Um, and I think that makes me a good fit, especially in the Diocese of Chicago, where uh, the issues related to small parishes um, are uh, need to be, I think, placed in, in the forefront of, um, you know, advising the bishop on standing committee. I also have a year's experience now of, of being on standing committee and hope to continue to learn and and listen and be present to my colleagues on standing committee uh, for all of you as well as the bishop. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you. Next, we will move to the Reverend Court Williams. So Court, please share your name congregation, why you are running, and why you are a good fit for standing committee. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for giving up part of your Saturday morning. Um, I am Court Williams. I am the rector of St. Giles in Northbrook. Um, and I am running for a standing committee to, to um, bring to um, this position um, lots of background in working um, in a large disparate diocese when I was in the Diocese of Chicago, excuse me, Diocese of Oregon, um, in, in looking at how do we balance between rural and urban and small and large and extremely poor and extremely wealthy parishes as the Diocese of Chicago has expanded um, already with, with um, the Diocese of Quincy rejoining we don't know what the future, you know, might hold as the diocese continues to big, it continues to grow. And how do we continue to support all of the different kinds of churches, all the different contextual needs of those churches? So I like to be, I, I think that I bring um, a lot of experience. I work in a lot of positions in the Diocese of Oregon. I work in some roles in the Diocese of Chicago. And uh, um it is the the my desire is to um, figure out how we continue to be um, a a force for ministry and mission um, throughout the different contexts in the Diocese of Chicago. Thank you very much, Court. 
All right, I don't think, I think Jaime is still not here. So um, we will move on to uh, our uh, lay person who's running, that is Wes Kimes. <laughs> uh, Wes, will you please uh, share with us your name, your congregation, why you're running and why you're a good fit? Thank you. Yes, and good morning, everyone. My name is Wes Kimes. I am a member of St. Michael's Parish in Barrington. Been there 30 plus years. I currently serve as the verger on the vestry and I head up our acolytes program. Before I begin, I need to make one important clarification. In my, my bio or in my address that I answered those two questions, my opening sentence was I am seeking a third term, which I need to correct that. It's not a third term, it's a third year because standing committee members cannot serve consecutive three-year terms. So I just want to clarify that error on my part. It is a third year. My first year was to fill a vacancy. My second year was elected to a one-year term. This will be my third trip on the uh, standing committee. So I just want to clear that up and hope it doesn't cause any problems for anyone. I also serve on the diocesan finance committee which the bishop instituted this year, which has been an incredibly powerful resource for the, for the diocese. It's also helped me as a member of diocesan committees to learn how integrated and how complicated our diocesan business is. So why, why do, am I seeking this? I think quite simply, we as a church, we as a diocese, we as parishes are challenged like we have never been before in ways that we never, never imagined. And certainly the years ahead of us are not going to be any easier. So in addition to our role being advise and consent, which is the two primary business reasons for the standing committee, I'm finding that we also need to play a role in listening advising, collaborating, problem solving, and even in some cases, pastoral help. We as the standing committee by charter get involved with the sale or purchase of assets and properties for churches. One of the things we're gonna face in the coming years is the closing of churches more than we've ever imagined. We find that that is, as you can imagine, an incredibly painful and serious transition for the parish. And while our, our role as the standing committee is to administer, advise, and consent with the technical parts of that, there's an emotional part and a pastoral part that I think we and our other counterparts in the other committees will and have to address. This past year, we had a chance to collaborate with bishops and trustees, uh, the finance committee and standing committee to, to solve problems. And I would tell you that we have incredible resources, incredible talent in all those locations. And you've heard the bishop say many times, the real strength of our diocese is the ability to collaborate and cross pollinate and to share information. We're getting better at that, but we're not there yet. So that's why I want to step into this role for yet a third year, not a third term, third year. So why I believe that I'm called to this, what are my gifts? My last 20 years, my first 28 years was spent as a business executive in telecom, sales, marketing, business administration, marketing, and mergers administration. My last 20 years have been spent as an executive coach working with men and women as they navigate changes and challenges in senior leadership, changes in business cycles, disruptions in markets, and to navigate changes in their own career. I believe God has given me two gifts, listening and compassion. And that's what has enabled me to help people through my work as an executive coach. And I bring it to my work at our parish to our vestry, and to our diocese. So 
thank you to all. Let's all have a hopeful and prayerful view of the future. And uh, thank you to all. Thank you, Wes. Appreciate it. That concludes our uh, discussion with uh, standing committee nominees. And so we will move along to the bishop and trustee nominees. The bishop and trustees, uh, bishop and trustees nominees, please use the raise hand feature if you haven't already to identify yourselves. The bishop and trustees hold title to and oversee the use of real property of the Diocese of Chicago, including St. James Commons, mission congregations, and closed properties. They approve purchases, sales, construction projects involving mortgages and real estate, and the diocesan budget. Each trustee is also a liaison to at least one mission congregation. The trustee works with the vicar and lay leadership on matters relating to the physical plant. Knowledge of property issues is important, and the ability to think creatively about congregational development is quite useful. Twelve trustees serve three-year terms. This year, we are electing one clergy person and four lay people for three-year terms. Candidates for BNT in the clergy order are the Reverend Kevin Goodman, and in the lay order, Mr. Lon Myers, Mr. Bill Pearson, Mr. Fred Reed, and Ms. Nicole Spencer. We will start by inviting the clergy candidate to share his name, congregation, why he's running, and why he's a good fit. Kevin, please go ahead and unmute yourself. Well, thank you and good morning. My name is Kevin Goodman. Uh, I currently serve as the executive director for EFM Education for Ministry. So my Congregation is 4,200 participants in the Education for Ministry program worldwide. So I work at the University of the South at Swanee. My canonical residence remains in Chicago. And I'm grateful that once a month for a week, I get to come home to Chicago, where at least we have good food and a movie theater. Um, I was invited to by several folks to consider doing this. I did not seek this. Um, um, and so when people spoke with me, I said I would discern and listen and consider. Um, during my time in Chicago, I served as an associate rector at All Saints, uh, homeless youth pastor for night ministry, associate dean of the cathedral, and then I became an interim rector. I believe my experience as interim, where I served four congregations uh, through, uh, through a period of eight years, preparing them for new leadership, uh, gives me insight into the challenges that congregations face um, and the realities of financial matters. Uh, the, the, the challenges all of us face in our ministry context are the same challenges we faced at the institution of the University of the South in Suwannee. And so I think the church, as well as institutions writ large, are in a period of transition and change, and I'm glad to be considered for this position. Thank you very much, Kevin. We will now move along to the folks in the lay order and I will ask Lon to unmute himself. Please share your name, congregation, why you're running and why you're a good fit. Uh, thank you, I'm Lon Myers. I worship at St. David's in Glenview. Uh, I've been there for over 40 years. I'm currently serving as its senior warden. Uh, before we go further, uh, we, we actually are electing five people. We have five positions open. We have three three-year terms and two shorter two-year terms and only four candidates. So uh, I wanted to clarify that because we still need one more person actually to fill out the full roster of 12 people, even if everybody is elected, which one would certainly expect. Uh, <laughs> Could I also add a little more background about BNT as an organization before I get into my personal thing? Yeah, yeah, I'll give you a couple. Okay, um, BNT owns over twenty properties across the diocese, uh, from Chicago all the way down to uh, very close to uh, Quincy, uh, with a book value of about thirty-three million dollars. Uh, it also owns, uh, well, 
and you mentioned we connect through liaisons. Uh, every trustee is liaison to at least one property. We also connect through our full-time property manager, Tom Kamel, who is invaluable to all of the trustees and to the congregations, uh, particularly the ones that we own. Uh, BNT has about $7 million of investments. Uh, it uses them for property grants to congregations that it owns, uh, it, uh, or properties that it owns. Um, so far this year, we've given grants to 11 properties for nearly $300,000. Uh, we also uh, uh, this year made a $250,000 contribution to the diocesan budget uh, for 2024. And we have for at least the last dozen years funded Vitality grants, uh, uh, which were just announced uh, this week. Uh, and in 2024, we uh, funded Vitality grants for $275,000. So we have a multiple roles, not only as a property owner, but also as a uh, uh, investment uh, owner and funder. And some of the major activities going right on right now are the sale of 65 East Huron to the uh, St. James Cathedral, uh, working on sale of some closed properties uh, across the diocese, and uh, facility work at uh, the properties we own, including significant work at St. James uh, Cathedral and, uh, and St. Martin's in Chicago. Uh, so it's a very diverse pool of activities that we, uh, uh, that we handle, Bishop and Trustees. Uh, turning to my uh, personal statement, uh, I've served uh, as a trustee for over 20 years. I'm now the uh, first vice president and I would like to continue to serve our diocese through BNT. Uh, we need to continue to work to strengthen congregations uh, in the properties that are owned by BNT, which we do through our liaison work and through our property, uh, or physical property uh, grant funding. Uh, and we need to continue to strengthen congregations elsewhere through things like the Vitality Grant. Uh, we, uh, I want to participate personally in the dynamic activity of a diocese as we uh, welcome our new bishop and she sets and implements and fine tunes her vision for the diocese. I did this with uh, uh, Bishop Purcell and Bishop Lee and I would love to do it with uh, uh, Bishop Clark. I think that she is great, and I think that she will be a great leader for our diocese. Uh, I also want to continue to work personally on selling uh, 65 East Huron to the cathedral. Uh, that will give the cathedral ownership of its property, which it uses for so many great programs. And it will also create a fund uh, for the diocese for its long-term financial health. And I want to continue along the lines that Wes mentioned to collaborate with other diocesan parties, uh, both on the Bishop staff and uh, uh, other entities like the standing committee on uh, governance activities and on uh, enhancing uh, congregational vitality and strength. Uh, we. We're so much better when we work together and uh, we need to continue to work and look at opportunities to collaborate uh, all across uh, the leadership of the diocese. So that's why I'd like to serve another four years. Uh, as far as background, uh, uh, I'm a retired attorney. Uh, I have a background in accounting and finance. Uh, and uh, I also uh, have a background somewhat in uh, uh, the legal areas involving charitable organizations, including a very strong sense of the fiduciary duties of trustees to our diocese, and also a good uh, working knowledge of how to operate a not-for-profit corporation like 
the uh, Bishop and Trustees. So that I've used that for 24 years. I'd like to continue to do it. Appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you, Lon. I appreciate the um, additional background about BNT as well. I uh, wanted to say a word. Uh, Bill Pearson, who's a lay candidate for BNT, is unable to be here today. And uh, I've also just been informed that Jaime Briseño is traveling today. And so he that is the reason why he is not here today. Our next uh, candidate for BNT, I will ask to unmute, is uh, Mr. Fred Reed. Fred, please show your name, congregation, why you're running, and why you're a good fit. Uh, good morning, everyone. Fred Reed, a uh, member of St. Edmund's Episcopal Church located on the south side of Chicago. I have been a member there since 2024, and around 2026, I was asked to volunteer my services and become a member of the vestry. And I've been working diligently at St. Edmund's uh, ever since 2026. Um, why do I feel uh, that this is an opportunity for me? Uh, prior to my uh, membership at St. Edmund's, I was a member for over 20 years at a Protestant church, look, also located on the south side, where I functioned as both a trustee and a deacon. Uh, prior to that, I managed my, uh, my parents' real estate. So in my personal belief, I think God has anointed me to be the keeper of property. Now, that's what I believe. Uh, that's what I've lived through over the last... Uh, probably 60 years. Uh, after serving as senior warden at St. Edmunds for just short of five years, I felt it was very urgent and needed that uh, the church have an opportunity for new leadership. I raised my hand and volunteered to step aside. Uh, once I did step aside, I was prayerfully encouraged that my calling, I just could not be a bench member. I needed to continue my services, not only to St. Edmunds, but to the Diocese of Chicago. And I was encouraged to become a member of Bishop and Trustees. I filled a vacancy for the year of 2024 for a one, one year term. That term will be ending uh, at the convention. Uh, or the end of the calendar year. I'm not quite sure. I'm new, so I'm not quite sure. Uh, but I raised my hand and asked for your prayers and the prayers of the diocese to allow me to continue serving uh, the Diocese of Chicago as a member of Bishop and Trustees. I am currently a liaison to St. Margaret of Scotland, also located on the south side. And over, I would say, over the last six months, I have learned to see St. Margaret's of Scotland as my second church home. i am become very passionate about the membership, their victor, vicar, as well as the upkeep and the need its physical maintenance of their property. Um, that's me in a nutshell. I'm prayerful. I'm a family member. And I would like to end on this note once I said family member. On this past Father's Day, I um, was offered a Father's Day gift by my youngest daughter, who was 21, to enroll in seminary school. I reacted too swiftly to that invitation and said, oh, no, dear, that's not me. I'm more property, more physical, and to my... I guess blindsidedness, my daughter took that as an insult because she sees me as not only being a godly father, as well as a, a person who stewards our personal home, and she has watched me st stewardship over St. Edmund. So that's me in a nutshell. I pray that uh, I will be asked to continue my services as bishop and trustees. Thank you all. Thank you, Fred.
And our final candidate for B&T is Ms. Nicole Spencer. Please share your name, congregation, why you're running, and why you're a good fit. Good morning, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Nicole Spencer. I have just come, I, my home parish is St. James Cathedral. I served on vestry, or otherwise known as chapter, at the cathedral for about five years. Uh, I uh, rose to become a junior warden and then ultimately senior warden. Uh, I am ending uh, my first term uh, on bishop and trustees, and I hope uh, that I will be prayerfully considered uh, to continue. Uh, on Bishop and Trustees. I have learned so much and my love uh, for this diocese has deepened uh, through my time on b and uh, as it's known. There are incredibly talented, committed, thoughtful people on Bishop and Trustees. And we, I believe now more than ever, as a group have an opportunity to meet the moment uh, and the season that our diocese is in. And I look forward to doing that work and continuing that work with my colleagues. Uh, specifically, what I know that I bring uh, to b &T is a deep belief in the importance of relationship, communication, and thoughtful, impactful process. I, as you may have seen in my bio and my candidate statement, I have more than 20 years experience in commercial real estate. Uh, that is everything from managing high-rise office buildings uh, in the loop here in Chicago, managing portfolios for CHA, uh, dealing with senior housing in co-ops and in condos. Uh, what those positions uh, brought to me was an opportunity to interact with, listen to, and learn from stakeholders of diverse backgrounds. It also gives me a very keen knowledge that while we as b &T, are responsible for assets, those assets are integral to the lives of people and congregations, and congregations that may be distressed, congregations that are mission. The work that we do as a diocese, but specifically the work that b and does, hits truly to the heart of people's faith communities and church homes. So when we take decisions, often difficult decisions, we must do it prayerfully, we must do it thinking long-term, but we must absolutely remember that everything is relationship-based, relationship to mission, relationship to congregations. And I look forward to continuing that work in the past, I would say 18 months or so. b and has sought the opportunity, has shown, I believe, wonderful leadership in recognizing that we touch so many aspects of our diocesan life. We approve the budget and because we care so deeply, uh, we moved forward in uh, being part of the finance uh, commission or finance committee. There's so much opportunity uh, for b and to be thoughtful, be prayerful and help the diocese grow and change uh, as we need to do. Uh, and I believe that B&T is a fantastic group of people uh, who can and will continue to do that. Uh, I ask uh, to be returned to that group uh, so we can continue that work. Uh, again, we have so many opportunities uh, to be available to each other uh, to leverage uh, the assets that this diocese has, not only financial, uh, but wonderful resources of talent. Uh, and one of the things that I'm most passionate about within uh, my work on b and is the possibility and the opportunity for mission congregations, distressed congregations to build capacity so that they can 
truly uh, be empowered uh, to make decisions and get out of this uh, crisis mode, uh, to run a mission, uh, to be part of a distressed community or distressed congregation means that you are constantly worrying about utilities and everything else uh, that pull every practical thing that pulls you away from pastoral and liturgical and, and other things. I believe uh, that B and T can, uh, because we're so plugged into the diocese, come up with creative ways uh, to stand alongside these mission congregations, these distressed congregations, to figure out ways to help them with some of the practical things that they're trying to do. Uh, and there are many ways to do that. I look forward to speaking with people, more importantly, listening to people uh, so that we can find a way to move forward uh, with the many resources that our diocese have, has rather. Thank you so much. I'm Nicole Spencer and I look forward to serving again if I'm so elected. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. That concludes our nominees for Bishop and Trustees. We have uh, one more nominee to introduce themselves for the cathedral chapter. So um, Eileen, please use the Zoom raise hand feature. The cathedral chapter is the elected board for the diocesan cathedral. One clergy person or lay person is elected for a three-year term. Following the end of this term, members must wait at least one year before seeking re-election. The cathedral chapter meets in the evening on the second Tuesday of the month. Chapter members set policy and give voice to a vision for the cathedral's ministry within the diocese. They oversee resource development, people, property, and finances to support the mission and ministry of the cathedral. This year, we will elect one individual for a three-year term, and we have one candidate for this position. Eileen, please share your name, congregation, why you're running, and why you're a good fit. Thank you, Louisa. Uh, so I'm Eileen Shanley Roberts. I am a clergy person in the diocese, uh, though it's, you know, Saturday. I didn't feel the need to put on my collar. Um, I My full-time position is as the Director of Contextual Education and Formation at Bexley Seabury Seminary. I have just finished a nearly five-year period as long-term supply at St. Paul's and McHenry, which has just voted to, well, just completed the consolidation process, which we will vote on on Saturday, next Saturday, um, to consolidate with St. Anne's and St. Mary's in so Woodstock, Crystal Lake, and become a single parish in McHenry County. Last year, I, during convention, the former dean of the cathedral approached me about filling the one-year term on the cathedral chapter. And she and the provost then conspired to get me to do this. And I, I was invited to take this position because I have served in some of our outlying congregations in the diocese where we often feel disconnected from our, from our cathedral. And yet my kids were actually confirmed at the cathedral. They participated in some of the diocesan-wide youth programming that took place at the cathedral. And I have a real investment in our cathedral serving as our cathedral, even for those of us in smaller places or struggling places that find it challenging to get downtown because the cathedral serves as a focal point in our community life. And it really and truly is our cathedral. I was appointed to a one-year term. I'm now asking to be elected to a full three-year term because I found the work on the cathedral chapter to be really interesting, life-giving, 
And this is a critical time in the life of our cathedral as it seeks to purchase the property of 65 East Huron from the diocese and, and really embrace what it means to be a center for worship and ministry serving the entire diocese. And I hope that you will elect me to continue in this ministry. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eileen. That concludes our introduction time for the nominees. We'll now move into question and answer. So if you have a question for any of the candidates specifically or uh, for any candidates of a particular entity, please write the name in the chat and your question and we will call on you. I'll give you a couple minutes to do that. Well, I'm waiting to see if there are any questions. A friendly reminder, as I'm pretty sure you all know, that convention is next Saturday. So a week from today, we will be in the middle of it. I'm really looking forward to being with all of you on the Zoom screen, and I know that uh, the bishop is as well. So thank you all for in advance for dedicating your time not only today to being here, candidates, delegates, and other members of the diocese, but also thank you for um, being available next Saturday as well. I don't see any messages in the chat. Crystal or Karen, will you just double check that for me? I'm not seeing anything either yet. Okay, perfect. It looks like we don't have any questions. So if that's the case, then uh, we can go ahead and wrap up. Um, if you're, if you think of anything during the wrap up, go ahead and put it in the chat. But um, otherwise, uh, again, thank you for your time today. And a uh, couple reminders for voting delegates. There will be a convention practice for new delegates or delegates who want to practice with uh, Zoom voting. And uh, Zoom information and voting credentials will be emailed to you on Tuesday, provided you are registered and certified for convention. Uh, and Crystal or Karen, I'm just going to confirm the convention practice is this coming Tuesday at noon? Yes. Tuesday, yes. Tuesday at noon. So actually, we should probably be mailing credentials in advance of that. There, will, Your credentials will be emailed to you before Tuesday at noon. Yes. <laughs> right. Well, thank you. Uh, I want to thank all of our candidates uh, who are running. Uh, we really appreciate your willingness to serve our diocese and are grateful for your leadership. Thank you all for attending. I hope you have a wonderful weekend, a wonderful rest of your Saturday. And uh, we look forward to uh, being with you all next Saturday at convention. Thanks, everyone. And thank you, Louisa. Bye. Bye, everybody. Ciao.